Well, there's, there's two strategies to besides the heat acclimation to cool the body. One is the Palmer cooling, mm -hmm. um, which has shown that you can, if you do this correctly, basically you're cooling either the palms of your hands, you can cool the bottoms of the feet, or you can cool the face. That's what are considered glabrous skin, which has these special blood vessels to bring in cold very quickly or dissipate heat very quickly. So a lot of athletes, MMA fighters, they like cool off the back of their neck or their chest. That's the worst way to cool the body off. Right, so the, be... the, the towel afterwards, after the fight, and you got the cut man, just like written, yeah. they're doing it, but it's the wrong spot. It's the wrong spot. They, for, if you're an MMA fighter, you can't cool the palms, but you can cool the forehead, the cheeks, the ears, and the bottoms of the feet with ice packs. Mm -hmm. You only have a minute between rounds. So you, so, you know, the more areas you cool, the additive cooling you get. The benefit of cooling in between or during competition is that you're not stiff, so to speak, but there are a lot of pre-cooling protocols, if you do them correctly, that have also been shown to get ahead of the problem and dramatically improve performance. So if you don't have, if you're not in a, in a competition where you actually have the ability to cool yourself down during an event, let's say you're a marathon runner, or you don't have the ability to stop and start cooling yourself or grab a, an ice pack during an endurance event and like right. start passing it in between your hands, you gotta, you gotta pre-cool then prior to performance. But a lot of people get it wrong. They jump into a cold plunge and that's not what you wanna do. Um, because that shocks the blood vessels, constricts them, and actually can raise core body temperature and prevent cold from being drawn in. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go into water that is not very cold, and you slowly decrease the temperature. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you really want to start at about 84 Fahrenheit, and you slowly decrease it, maybe down to 74 to 64. Um, that's what this, that's what the pre cooling protocols show. And you submerge yourself in water for typically anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes at those type of temperatures. And the goal is to drop baseline core body temperature by 0.3 degrees Celsius, which is about half a degree Fahrenheit. Once you do that, you've pre-cooled the body and that's been shown to increase performance. Hmm. How long before a, a competition? So say it's somebody, you know, running a marathon or an endurance event or a Spartan, something like that. How long before uh, should they be doing that? They should know exactly what protocol will get their core body temp down by about a half a degree. So they need to test out what water temperature works best for them. Cause at higher temperatures, like 84, if you just keep it at 84 Fahrenheit, it's going to probably take 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, if you drop it down to 74 or 64, it might only take 30 minutes. Um, so it depends on the water temperature. And essentially when you get, you basically want to monitor your core body temp every 10 minutes. So you, mm -hmm. you, you get out of the water for 10 minutes, you wait a couple minutes, check the temperature and then it, you know, it'll probably take 20 or 30 minutes. And then once you've dropped it by about half a degree, you've pre-cooled the body. Now, we don't know exactly if this is great for, let's say like an MMA fighter, right? Because like, you gotta be loose, yeah. right? Like running isn't as, uh, let's say potential damaging or yeah. exactly like, like when you're fighting, you're, there's a lot of things happening with your ankles and, and hamstrings. You gotta be warmed up very well. So in that type of athlete, it might be best to just do like glabrous cooling. That way you're not necessarily, you're cooling your core in, in the organs, but you're not necessarily cooling like your joints that could lead to stiffness and maybe potentially cause issues. Yeah. So the type of event also will determine the pre-cooling method, I would say. Okay. And then somebody that's just lifting weights, they, they could do something like the, the palmer cooling or the face where... Uh, it was it was the easiest way passing like a uh, something cold in between the palms in between sets uh or or ice cubes call it a, what what have you found to be the most practical because i mean people especially if they're going back to the gym they would be walking around with ice packs and then they're they're jug of water and doing everything else and they, it, it's going to be hard for them to do i'm sure companies are, are working on you know ways to get around this but what's the easiest way if you're if you're at home, one of the easiest ways is just to pour um, cold tap water um, in a bucket and just put your feet in, and that way you're just chilling for like a minute. Um, if you're at the gym, ice packs on the palms, on your forehead, and you alternate. And as soon as it gets uncomfortable, that means the skin has become too cold, and then you you go to a different area. Mm -hmm. But the more areas you cool simultaneously, the better it's going to work. So you could have you know your fists on too. Uh, two ice packs rather than one or passing it is going to cool you off quicker. 
Um, and then of course, the other strategy for improving performance is uh, inhibiting the acid that is produced in the cell. Um, and so it's called hitting peak alkalosis prior to performance, dramatically improves performance as well. So that's consuming things like bicarbonate or sodium citrate and things like that.